Hello, this is Helmer from AM. You're listening to Metal Wone. Cheers. Axel Bloomberg, finally! <laughs> finally! <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, I'm just fine. I just uh, I just woke up. I've been you know on work, so I needed some sleep, and uh-huh. uh, you know I work as you know night shifts. Right. So it was just my alarm going off. I was like, oh shit, it's half. Then I have to call. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Esoteric warfare. What can I say? You guys are back after <laughs> long years. A phenomenal album. It's released this week via Season of Mist. So you must have heard some sort of a response from your fans and colleagues. So what has been the best responses so far? It's been almost all good, uh, I would say. You know, uh, like in, in magazines and stuff like that have been uh, surprisingly good. You know, I'm a bit worried because it has been so good. Uh-huh. And uh, of course, it's uh, there has been some shit reviews. Uh, what, uh, what, what, yeah, well, what I mean with shit reviews is like like this. Uh, it uh, like you know uh, comparing like, the old material. Uh, no, uh, the, this this new material. Yeah, kind of comparison. Because, because when when people give it like uh, you know five out of ten mm-hmm. or six out of ten, I can really understand and I read you know the 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 recession that. They really didn't understand the record at all. It was better if they just gave it one or two, you know, and then mm-hmm. True. I it was clear for everybody that they really didn't <laughs> understand the record. But uh, that pisses me off a little bit. But you know, it's uh, all the records I have seen, all no, all the you know reviews I have seen that uh, mm-hmm. have been like uh, in the middle of the road. Right. Uh, it's uh, I can really you know see that. Uh, the reviewer didn't understand the record, but uh, so far, at least, it has been like 80%, you know, top reviews, I would say. Positive. That I've seen, anyway. Fantastic. So, from your own personal perspective, describe the sound of the album. Sound of the album is, uh, you know, uh, exactly, there, there's so much more than just the music, because if mm-hmm. you just listen to, if you just listen, then you are going to miss a lot, because there's so much more. Uh-huh. into that record in terms of, you know, uh, emotions, uh, right. atmosphere, mm-hmm. uh, and, and, and everything, you know, so, uh, plus it's some kind of a concept album too, you know, so we really have to, you know, understand and, uh, you know, make out what uh, sure. is singing about and shit like that, so it's, uh, well, it's a very deep album, uh, mm-hmm. um, in that respect, that, uh, um, could be hard maybe or at least it takes more than one listen to actually yeah it takes more time to grow yeah absolutely all right and i had a chat with uh, necro butcher like few weeks ago and we were discussing about the new album so in that case i could figure out that he explained that a lot of topics such as mind control human experimentation all those things were explored on this album So from that point of view, were you part of the lyrics which Attila wrote and you also contributed something? He always, you know, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. was discussing stuff with us, sending us the the lyrics by mail and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, uh, but at the end, of course, he had the final say about this, this whole stuff, you know, Uh, it was, it's that, uh, you know, this, uh, this history, this, uh, lyrical uh, concept is his baby, uh, absolutely, mm-hmm. and uh, that's something for me also to explore because I haven't, you know, put myself into too much, uh, uh, you know, to understand what he's uh, always writing right. about. Right, that's true. And in terms of writing, I mean, I've been listening to Cywar for for a long time, and when it released, the single was released, I could figure out that the fans reaction was a bit different because they seem to draw comparison with Thorns, which which is interesting given that you were a session drummer for Thorns self-titled debut album. Uh, and even more interesting that uh, Black Thorn or Snora was a part of Mayhem when, uh, right. during the <laughs> Mysterious days. 
uh, and uh, brought some stuff on the Mysterious uh, as well. So that, yeah. that's very interesting. But, you know, uh, I really can't... Well, I, I can see, you know, why they think it's a little bit tornish, you know, because of the, uh, you know, the, the guitar playing. But, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, you know... Uh, I think it's so much more than you know. Oh, it sounds like Torns. No, it doesn't sound like Torns. How does Torns sound like? You know, uh, I mean, their uh, their uh, you know uh, signature was this kind of you know holding a grip and going up and down through uh, sure. through. Yeah, exactly. You know, so like for example, on Airy the sense that was Torns signature, and he mm-hmm. kind of went to that stuff. So right. And there's nothing like that on this record. It's it's some sliding, a uh, small sliding, and, and and that's it, you know. But uh, right. I mean, I uh, I don't have a problem with people comparing it to to mm-hmm. Thorns, but uh, I really can't see why they are like uh, say it's similar to Thorns because it, it it in my eyes it it's not. Not okay. The comparisons will vary. But in terms of uh, songwriting for this time, how was the process? I mean, how did you, for instance, contribute to the arrangements and the composition placements? Quite much, actually, because uh, um, I was some kind of, uh, what should I say, uh, <laughs> guard when it comes to, uh, okay, we can have, th- this will work, this okay. will work. Yeah, exactly. So in that in that term, you know, uh, Telok had to, you know, since he was new and everything, he he had to write himself in to the, into this process of being a songwriter in Mayhem. Right. And you do, just can't do that by just uh, coming and everything is ready. You know, so right. it, it was a, a long process, you know, uh, um, until we found out how it was going to be, you know, and mm-hmm. I said no to a lot of songs, uh, even, uh, you know, Attila told me that, okay, Calamar, you have to be the... The main guy to figure out yeah. what's happening. <laughs> exactly, you know, the musical guard and say yes and no to this and that, and everyone was fine with that, and uh, for sure, you know, I, uh, I I could hear what was going to work for Mayhem right. uh, uh, or not, you know, so... Uh, and of course, I was at most mostly the stuff uh, he he wrote, you know, uh, mm-hmm. by himself. But uh, I was also involved uh, in some kind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but when he was writing it, I was there, you know, and said, "Aha, this was cool. We have to build more on this. This have right. to go a bit more. This have to go less. We have to do it like that. We have to change tones here and there." And uh, yeah, so it was like uh, it was. I, I think he, he was very happy about that, you know. That's wonderful. Now, from the drums perspective, you're the man who can decide everything. But from the musical cos- perspective, was, uh, you know, Necrobutcher part of it, or is it just you and Telok and Attila deciding, okay, this is going to work, this is not going to work? Well, if Necrobutcher was, like, totally disagreed on what was going well, what I said worked, then he would, uh, of course, say it. But he didn't say, uh, he didn't have any objection, so he was. He was also quite, uh, what should I say? Uh, satisfied. Satisfied. Yeah. Okay. That, that's he great. didn't have a vital part in it like this, but uh, he uh, he has just as much to say as the rest of us. So if okay. he was okay. uh, disagreed, then he, then he would raise his voice, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, big new, uh, Bielek is the man behind the very vividly illustrated artwork of the album. Now, what does it indicate? What does it represent uh, in terms of the album's theme? Actually, that I haven't, you know, uh, but when it comes to the artwork, uh, I didn't have any, you know, finger in the game. So okay, so no idea about it? No, no, absolutely not. I, uh, no idea. I haven't even the art. I, I don't have the record myself at all. <laughs> okay. I, uh, you know, the band are always the last to get it. So I hope that Michael will soon send me some copies so I can explore it and see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Now... Taylor had to basically replace Blasphemer, who's been your longtime guitarist. So, how did you guys end up choosing him? I mean, was there any involvement with the Umoral since you know you were part of it? Well, back in the days uh, when I was searching for guitarist, you know, uh, I mentioned his name. Uh, it was actually also Blasphemer himself said that you should uh, you should get uh, Taylor. Okay. After me. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but 
you know, uh, it didn't go that way. And okay. when he was ready, Telek was ready. Uh, Mayhem had another lineup. Right. But you know, me and him was always in contact all these years. Always, it was kind of the same with, for example, when Maynek left. That me right. and me and Attila always had contact, and we knew it was going to happen, but we, we didn't know when. when and, right. When the until was I right. fired uh, Maniac, uh, I called him. I was actually in, I think it was in Nice or Marseille, Marseille or something like that, and I mm-hmm. called him and said, do you know why I call? And he <laughs> said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bond, incredible bond. You get to know each other very easily what's happening. Yeah. Wonderful. Now let's talk about your history as a drummer for a bit. I know uh, you were initially inspired by bands like Maiden as a teenager, but what was the turning point in your life that led you to pursue such an extreme style of drumming? Um, well, when I joined Mayhem, it was like I was uh, and all that. I was listening, you know, to Death Crush, and I was like, ah, well, this is not the kind I want to play because I wanted to play some kind of, you know, technical death metal, uh-huh. you know, this <laughs> kind of stuff, drum style, you know, right. drum style. Uh, so I, when we started, you know, creating songs back in the days, in the very early stage, you know, I, I wanted to, you know, uh, instead of like doing blast. Beats, mm-hmm. which was very kind of in, unusual then, but it was like right. very primitive. I wanted to incorporate some more uh, some musicality into it, for example, right. and uh, and and stuff. So uh, because uh, when you think about it, the blast beat is very unmusical way of of drumming. Because mm-hmm. I came from a very different background, uh, right. and stuff. So. Uh, but 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 for me, you know, it uh, it, it worked out good. Uh, I think that uh, you know, uh, with, with my totally different background, uh, mm-hmm. uh, and I was able to kind of fusionate, you know, this a lot of styles. Of, yeah, yeah, fusionate. Yeah, also my my, my uh, and create some kind of my own sound by uh, right. trying to play more musical and and explore the drum kit uh, instead of just hitting on it. You know. Correct. Yeah, I understand that. In terms of even when your other projects like Arcturus, now you've been involved with that as well, along with Mayhem. So, is there any new material in the works? You know, let's say you guys will be on tour. You already just finished your one uh, one month tour. So, is there anything going on in the you know background with Arcturus and some new material coming up? Yes, it is. So I just talked to the guys, and we were supposed to uh, release a new record, which the, dr- the drums are finished like almost two years ago, mm-hmm. or something like that. Uh, but. Uh, it was supposed to be released now this fall, or first it was uh, supposed to be released uh, this spring, okay. uh, to get, and then May uh, with, together with Mayhem, mm-hmm. and it was supposed to be released now uh, in you know September, October or something, but mm-hmm. that don't work either. Didn't so didn't work out. <laughs> no, so like in one year from now it will be released. Like I would say, for example, maybe, maybe uh, around summer 2015. Uh, I would say spring. Okay. Or early spring, early spring, yes. Cool, that's awesome. Now, you've been part of Mayhem right from the beginning. You've seen it all, you've seen, you know, success, you've seen so many of your band members, you know, dying and etc, etc. So, how do you think has that impacted you as, as a musician and as somebody who has been part of a well-known band in the history of heavy metal? Actually, that I don't know, uh, because these are things that you really don't, know anything about or can do anything about but of course it uh, it uh, affects you uh, as a musical as a mu- as musician and as a person but how it has affected me i don't know <laughs> <laughs> there's no answer for that <laughs> okay and and you also have two bands which have been more progressive like winds and age of silence mm-hmm. then there's also death of desire which i believe attila was involved in as a guest vocalist Yes, it was, and it actually uh, co- it also has you know psychoma uh-huh. you know, from from uh, the covenant in it uh, on, on keyboards as as well. Cool. So, what is the status of these projects? Is it just going in the background and people are not aware of it? Uh, well, uh, in terms of it, the death of uh, or uh, this DOD uh, stuff uh, was mainly you know as. Uh, so kind of, well, it was just a job that I did, but then he, uh, <laughs> okay. the main guy picked up some other people because I was playing on, uh, for example, uh, 
um, Wes, uh, Weston Cage's uh, right. album, for example, and mm -hmm. then he also got Weston Cage as a uh, vocalist for... Okay. There's been some back and forth on that, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, so... All right. <laughs> So, uh, well, it's interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how this goes, you know, but I'm, I'm not I'm not more involved in okay. it. Uh, okay. You know, it's uh, l like like this, you know. No. Right, I understand. Now, now, according to you, how important do you think is ideology in music? I mean, I'm asking this because you have mentioned in the past that the ide ideological leanings of people, let's say like Euronymous and Satanism, ultimately didn't matter to you for a personal standpoint. So could, exactly. Yeah. So could you give us your perspective on these ideologies in music? Well, if you have a strong ideology in life, you should uh, also have it in music or in your art form. But it doesn't doesn't have to be the same. Right. Let's say like you're very politically interested in uh, in, in your personal life. You mm -hmm. don't have to drag that into the music. That True. could uh, there's so there's uh, other uh, you know. Uh, um, other stuff there that that matters just yeah. as most. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, that's great. And you've played in numerous bands, various genres, won so many awards, but yet your thirst for more remains the same. So, are there any aspirations that still remain unfulfilled for you? Mm. <sighs> yeah, <laughs> a lot actually. Uh huh. Tremendously. Uh, I, I mean, I. I would love to play other kind of music, bigger crowds, uh, do other things. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm still, you know, as a drummer. Also, I'm just on the on the beginning. I feel, you know, I want to explore even more uh -huh. styles, uh, different styles. You know, things that I can't really do good enough yet that I'm still working on. Working on, okay. And you know, there's there's so there's so much, you know. Uh, so uh, you know, in general, I haven't achieved anything that uh, <laughs> almost you know <laughs> okay cool well people know about you know axel bloomberg people know about hellhammer people know about mayhem but they don't know that you also have other passions like wrestling and weightlifting yeah that's <laughs> true oh. yeah so do you still pursue these hobbies or it's just music takes a lot of time in your life well it takes a lot of time but i also have time for my hobbies like you mentioned and of course uh, i'm into collecting things i'm into uh like uh making you know food and stuff like that I'm, right. and and uh, you know I I always have uh, my heart I have a heart in so many different uh, you know things and uh, just waiting and, for the right time to do it yeah, yeah and when when you have like a passion and, and a great interest in something then uh, it is gonna happen in the end somewhere. it is going to happen and it have to be good <laughs> Wonderful. Now, finally, Mayhem is tentatively scheduled to make your Indian debut for the first time in September. Yeah. So, we already discussed offline, but what's your take on this and do you have any expectations from this experience? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, it's going to be great uh, mm -hmm. because I heard like there's a lot of people going to show up. Mm -hmm. There's a different market, uh, like a new market for Mayhem to, to conquer. and. And uh, it's going to be very interesting to see. It was actually Arcturus also when I told you know Knut Waller, the guitarist, about this. They was uh -huh. like, "Oh shit, we also <laughs> can. We also want to go there. Do you think it's possibility that we also could play?" And uh, I said, "I think it was this guy Tony Turinen from Finland uh, mm -hmm. that was in contact with uh, uh, with some of you guys." And I haven't heard anything back, but you know if. Okay. Uh, if that could happen, uh, that would be fucking awesome if also our tours could Wonderful. So if I have to conclude this interview on a, on a small point by asking you a question to define the new Mayhem album, Esoteric Warfare, in just one sentence. In just one sentence. Then I would say... Uh, Tricky question, huh? Uh, yeah, actually, <laughs> <laughs> very tricky. Well, let me think about this for uh, 25 more seconds, and I will come up with this. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, so many thoughts are going on in your mind. 
Exactly. I would say it has it, it has to be uh, uh, you know uh, that esoteric warfare is uh, uh, complex, uh, intelligent uh, mm-hmm. um, disaster of the record. Wonderful. So I was just waiting for you to hit the nail, and you definitely did it. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Axel, thank you so much for sparing your time. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Looking forward to meet you in person as well. And I'm absolutely. sorry that it has been so much back and forth and took so long time, <laughs> but finally we, no we made it. All is well, definitely. Take care, brother. I'll catch you soon. Thank you, bro. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.